Hello and welcome again to another podcast from uh, the Cleveland Clinic. I'm Osama Wazni, the section head of electrophysiology here at the clinic. And I'm joined today by Dr. Jaber, who is the director of nuclear cardiology and the ECHO, or the imaging uh, core lab, and also Owen Donnellan, who's one of our star fellows. Uh, we're here to discuss a very interesting study that we just uh, got published. And this has to do with cardiorespiratory fitness and outcomes uh, after atrial fibrillation ablation. Uh, so, Dr. Jaber, if you would, uh, please uh, discuss with us, you know, your background with regards to fitness and cardiac outcomes in general. Uh, thank you, Dr. Wozni, and thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Donnelly, for being here. Uh, this is actually a collaborative work uh, we've been uh, doing for a few years. Uh, we uh, have capitalized on uh, one of the largest uh, exercise uh, databases probably in the world, uh, starting from 1990 all the way to now. Uh, this database... Uh, uh, included every patient who had a stress test done within the Cleveland Clinic healthcare system. Uh, whether the stress test was just simple treadmill stress test or stress test combined with imaging modality like echo or nuclear uh, MRI and others. So what we did is we, uh, uh, over the years, we uh, have uh, uh, used this uh, stress test uh, database uh, to look, uh, to get some ideas about uh, how the, peop the performance on the stress test and outcomes. So recently, maybe about two years ago, uh, uh, in uh, JAMA, in Open JAMA, we published a paper uh, looking at uh, functional capacity as almost a risk factor in its association with mortality. And uh, we, uh, uh, with that, we have used over 120,000 patients in the database. And from the 120,000 patients, we figured out that uh, the higher your functional capacity on a stress test, meaning the more METs you perform, the longer you stay on the treadmill, uh, was associated with a, a much lower mortality, and there was no uh, upper end uh, or upper limit of benefit. So we did not see a uh, U-shaped curve. We did not see, we just saw a linear curve with a dose, dose response. Basically, the more fit you are, uh, the longer, the more likely you live as an association, not as a causality, of course, because it's a retrospective study. So with that, uh, we start thinking about other uh, disease entities that can uh, benefit from that, and then hence the work with, uh, with uh, Owen. So Owen, could you tell us about the study and dive in into the details? For example, what can we expect for the fittest person going into an AFib ablation versus the least fit uh, patient going into an AFib ablation? Absolutely. So several studies over the past few years have demonstrated the incontrovertible role of risk factor modifications in improving uh, AFib burden and outcomes following ablation. Uh, we studied 591 patients who underwent an exercise stress test within 12 months of ablation. Uh, we stratified them first according to their cardiorespiratory fitness group, either low, adequate, or high. Uh, basically what we found was that the, the high cardiorespiratory fitness group had much lower arrhythmia recurrence following ablation. Uh, we found that this relationship pertained to both paroxysmal and persistent AFib. When we further classified the patients according to their functional capacity, uh, going from poor to high, again we found this dose-response relationship that Dr. Jaber referred to. The more physically fit someone was, the more likely they were to benefit from AFib ablation and the less likely they were to have recurrent arrhythmia. And this was independent of the burden of atrial fibrillation? This was independent of the burden of AFib, yes. Very good. That's a very important point. Importantly, we, we, when we looked at mortality following ablation, we also found that the highest cardiorespiratory fitness group also had the lowest mortality in the, uh, in the, in the, in the years following ablation. This is mortality and not related to ablation itself. This is just overall No, this mortality. is overall mortality. Yes. Correct, yeah. Just to clarify. Uh, finally, when we divided our, our cohort into percentiles, again, we demonstrated a dose-response relationship. Um, the fitter someone was, the less likely they were to, to have arrhythmia recurrence. That's a very important data, and I think it's very important for our um, referring physicians to start the dialogue with the patients about risk factor modification. Frankly, when I see a patient now in clinic and they do very well after an ablation, 
and if we've had this discussion before, they thank me more for losing weight than for staying out of atrial fibrillation. Because if you think about it, yes, atrial fibrillation is, 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 is a risk factor itself also regarding mortality, but the bigger risk factors have to do with obesity, hypertension, and diabetes. And if we can control their weight and their uh, fitness levels, then those factors will also improve, and that's why probably we had the mortality benefit that you observed uh, in the study. So one, one of the things, actually, looking at this graph, uh, I kept on thinking about uh, when, uh, by the way, this is published in the Heart Rhythm uh, Journal uh, this, uh, this week. Uh, one of the, uh, of the things about it is like, if you, are, if you have, have to invent an antiarrhythmic medication, and uh, you have to trust, test a dose response to the medication without toxicity, uh, this is this graph represents that antiarrhythmic medication. This is, this is the best antiarrhythmic. So you can have you can use your fitness as an antiarrhythmic medication without any toxicity. So because most drugs we use at the upper limits have some toxicity, here we have a drug that at low dose, you know, is not that effective, and at a very high dose, it's actually extremely effective. And fortunately for us, also at the at the clinic, uh, in our same Heart and Vascular Institute, in the same building we are able to provide all the care that the patients need uh, for achieving this. So we have in our own core group uh, a preventive cardiologist who treats diabetes, another that treats uh, hypertension, very soon someone who will treat sleep apnea, and we already have you know, exercise physiologists uh, so that we're all co-located and we don't have to refer them to uh, an endocrinologist across the street, for example. They're all in the same building and it, became, it makes it uh, very effective for the patients and convenient for the patients when, when they come here. And so um, any final thoughts, uh, Owen, on, on where to go with this uh, data and findings? I think the next step really is uh, to, to look at this prospectively, um, you know, to, to validate these results. But I think between these studies and uh, the previous studies that have been done in Australia and elsewhere, uh, I think the message is clear that risk factor modification is absolutely essential uh, in the management of AFib and prior to AFib ablation. Dr. Jim? So and, uh, this is actually another opportunity to show the wonderful work you, Owen, have done over the past few years in shedding a lot of uh, traditional risk factors light on, on atrial fibrillation uh, from the, uh, your work on obesity and, uh, and uh, sleep apnea and other risk factors. This again shows the convergence of cardiology again. So these are risk factors traditionally we thought are uh, related to coronary artery disease. And now we're finding out that these are all the same. So atrial fibrillation might be the uh, tip of the iceberg of all these problems at the bottom, which are the obesity, the hypertension, the diabetes, the sleep apnea. And now we're seeing uh, this is the clinical manifestation of it. So thank you so much for your work. I think uh, controlling this risk factor, uh, staying fit, is a great antiarrhythmic, is a great tool to uh, maintain a healthy living. Very well said, and thank you very much. Uh, and uh, join us hopefully soon for another podcast from the Cleveland Clinic. Thank you.